Hey all, uh, this podcast is going to be on uh, peripheral nerve blocks in the emergency department. This is um, becoming more and more popular w for good reason, obviously. Patients uh, get major benefits out of having uh, various ultrasound guided peripheral nerve blocks instead of opioid analgesia or moderate sedation to reduce fractures and dislocations, etc. Especially the older population with hip fractures and uh, so forth, uh, you can block, very easily block a patient and especially in a rural area, send them down the road or send them to the floor for surgery, whatever, and they have long-acting profound analgesia without getting IV narcotics. And obviously this makes a huge difference in elderly patients, um, but is also huge in pretty much any population. Even kids can benefit from this. So you can do complete um, fracture reduction, splinting, dislocation reduction, etc. under uh, peripheral nerve block and not have to give any sedation at all. Uh, Long-acting analgesia, I blocked um, one patient that had a, a real severe uh, humerus fracture and we're in a tiny rural place and she wanted to drive to Seattle where she lived to have it um, um, fixed so I gave her a block and off she went and I checked up with her the next day and she had no pain the whole trip uh, 18 hour block it was great and you can provide this for the patients and you don't have to be anesthesia to do it these blocks are very safe and simple to do with uh, ultrasound so I want to start off by debunking um, some orthopedic surgeons uh, white elephant about compartment syndrome. Pretty much all the studies are saying that um, you, it's really not an issue providing regional anesthesia, uh, peripheral nerve blocks, so to speak, uh, for um, hiding compartment syndrome. And uh, the military has really brought this to the forefront because they're a huge proponent of it. They do a lot of, of uh, peripheral nerve blocks and trauma. And um, the studies back them up. Uh, every now and then I'll run into an old orthopedist that hasn't kept up on literature and still thinks that the one study that they came out that blamed uh, peripheral nerve block when the nerves weren't even the ones involved. Um, so they kind of raise a fuss, but um, you know what? It's time to come up in the 21st century and, and get with the literature. Now I do tend to give a shorter acting block if it's a, a tibia. Um, which is high risk for compartment syndrome, but we ship all our uh, fractures off anyway, but at least this gets them down to the receiving hospital um, pain-free and it makes a huge difference. But this particular study shows that um, actually a peripheral nerve block may permit earlier detection of um, compartment syndrome. So it can actually be a good thing. This study um, shows that um, regional anesthesia does not lead to delay in ACS diagnosis. Um, what they looked at, they had four clinical cases of epidural analgesia that um, may have been associated with a delayed uh, compartment syndrome diagnosis. And really, if you're doing your job and able to assess, you should be able to assess these patients because breakthrough pain is going to happen anyway. And uh, it's not hard to do a, a pressure test either if you um, do suspect it. And this um, study talks about the one case report way back when that asserted that ephemeral block was responsible for missing uh, an anterior compartment syndrome following a nailing. But, you know, the anterior compartment is supplied by the deep peroneal nerve, and so ephemeral block is really unlikely. But, of course, the orthopedic surgeon tried to blame it on that, which uh, tends to happen. But, um, you know, the literature doesn't support him or not doing a peripheral nerve block. Now, epidural analgesia, uh, like I talked about a minute ago, has uh, been implicated in a couple, but um, we're not discussing epidurals. So I'm just going to go over the blocks and what they're used for. I'm not going to delve in 
deep on how to do the blocks. That'll be for later podcasts, or I'll recommend some really good um, podcasts that are, that are already out there, such as ultrasoundpodcast.com and 5 Minute Sano. A few ER physicians that do an outstanding job at it. But in any case, uh, starting with the clavicle, get a, a fractured clavicle in, um, which happens, you know, not infrequently. And you can provide these patients with long-acting um, analgesia. You do a cervical uh, plexus block. Very easy to do, very safe to do, uh, especially with ultrasound guidance. Literally takes just a couple minutes. Uh, you could also do these for if you're putting in an IJ. I, um, if I'm going to do a, an IJ, I will, I'm will. i using the ultrasound anyway. I just pop in a cervical plexus block, and I don't have to localize. It's actually a lot more comfortable for the, pa- for the patient instead of just looking up, localizing that little spot for the needle. And I tend to use um, pretty much all ropivacaine, but you, you can also use bupivacaine. Uh, you don't need very much, uh, 5 to 10 mils. If you're starting out, I'd go toward the 10 mil side. If you've done a few, you may be dropping your your dose. Uh, Works very, very well. Long-acting analgesia. If you get a patient with a shoulder, um, humerus fractures, uh, shoulder dislocation even, um, interscaling block works wonders. If I have a shoulder dislocation, um, my choice is I haven't sedated one in, in literally years. And if you're having trouble getting it back in normally with uh, Cunningham or the other various techniques, you can pop in either a um, intraarticular block, and I use ultrasound for that as well, or just uh, do a short-acting interscaling block with lidocaine. Wears off very quickly, gives uh, profound uh, relaxation and analgesia, and makes uh, your life much easier in the ER with a difficult shoulder reduction. Also for humerus block, I mentioned that earlier, a patient I had uh, come in with a really bad uh, humerus fracture that drove to Seattle with no pain. And again, I tend to use ropivacaine, but um, lidocaine if it's just going to be a a reduction because you don't need uh, long-acting analgesia for that, obviously. So you also use bupivacaine. And um, if you're just starting out, I would err on the side of, um, or be conservative, I should say, not an error. But anyway, more towards 20 mils, uh, but you can reduce that dosage um, when you get better at it. And um, also with a l- reduced dosage, less chance of bagging the phrenic nerve, which you don't particularly want to do. I mean, it's not a big deal in a normal patient. Uh, lidocaine for short acting, and of course, it'd be pivocaine if that's all you have. Uh, arm and hand. Um, supraclavicular and infraclavicular blocks. These are very easy. I tend to do mostly infra- infraclavicular. Um, the um, block takes a couple minutes to do. Uh, again, ropivacaine, bupivacaine, 15 to 20 mils. Gives profound analgesia. You can use this for anything on the arm, uh, anything on the hand, the wrist. You get distal radius fractures, um, bad mangled hand, or whatever. Uh, this works great for, and again, it's very easy to do. Uh, radius ulna, we get uh, distal fractures in fairly frequently. And I do um, like to do intraclavicular blocks. I don't do interscaling blocks for these much because sometimes um, um, interscaling blocks just don't work as well for the uh, wrist hand. I mean, the it just has a higher failure rate than infraclavicular blocks. You can also do a supracondylar radial ulnar medial blocks, but uh, I find it just easier to do a infraclavicular block. If you do it below the elbow, um, you may miss uh, parts of it, and the patient may not be totally happy with you. If you do do selective radial ulna medial, um, five to seven mils is all you need per nerve. Another thing I do. Um, especially with kids, I like uh, hematoma block. Um, it's very effective, and especially for kids, put a little bit of M-block cream on for 15 minutes or so at the ejection sh- site, then do a hematoma block. I also use ultrasound with the hematoma block because you can uh, deposit the local right act at the fracture site and, and not just do a, a fan injection and hope you get it. Um, ultrasound's great for um, check in reduction as well instead of multiple x-rays. Obviously you're still going to get an x-ray at the end, but 
Um, it cuts down on the amount of radiation. And the pain relief afterwards is outstanding. They go home and they're um, comfortable for hours. Uh, gives them a chance to settle down, get some um, other modalities into them. I always tell them, make sure that you don't wait till the pain comes back before you start treating it, obviously. You want to give them something a little bit early. So hours down the road when they start to feel it, they can be ready and have something on board. The hand, um, I do um, a lot of forearm blocks for the hand, um, radial and medial, depending on where it is on the hand. If it's a uh, you know, finger fractures, obviously, if it's just all in a combination of all in a medial, radial, radial, medial, etc. And they're very, very easy to do. I usually use around 5 cc's per nerve. Uh, with the ultrasound, it makes a um, very simple, literally a couple minute block. It takes a few minutes to set up. Very safe, no sedation, long acting analgesia. Ribs. Um, Ribs are really, really painful. Speaking of someone who has, who's had fractured ribs a few times, and doing a stratus plane block, a rectus spinae plane block, um, is outstanding. Gives long-acting uh, pain relief. Um, ropivacaine, bupivacaine. And it's a plane block, so you have to use a fair amount, 20, 30 mils. Uh, easy to do. I think um, most people are 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 doing rectus spinae blocks. Uh, instead of the stratus plane block, it's um, uh, especially if it's posterior rib fractures, uh, then you want to do an ESP. Patients will love you, I promise, especially the elderly that have um, rib fractures and may be admitted for observation. Hip femur, uh, I touched on this before, especially in the elderly. You get a hip in and um, um, instead of pumping them full of narcotics and out to lunch they go, you can do a block. It's quick, it's easy, provides hours and hours of pain relief, and they, they will be most appreciative. The A lot of people are, are moving to, to the PENG block. It's a fairly new block, and this is what I have the picture over here. This is what a PENG looks like, and you can deposit your local anesthetic um, right here. Femoral arteries over here, and I've done a lot of fa fasciolaca blocks as well, and um, get pretty good uh, uh, results from it. And you're going to use a fair amount of local 40 to 60 mils for fasciolaca block, long-acting duration. Uh, Peng block, you can reduce the dosage quite a bit, and it actually does a much better job of uh, getting all the nerves that innervate the hip joint and capsule. It's an easy block to do. Um, all you got to do is start trying them. And a popteal block <clears throat> uh, for tibia, ankle, and foot. Do these a lot. Uh, any ankle fracture pretty much that comes in. Um, if it's a bad foot fracture, tibias uh, will get a pop block. The um, When I say pop block, I'm talking about either the sciatic nerve or um, just below it where it splits into the common fibular tibial nerves. It takes a little while to set up. If you block it um, before it branches, you're looking at probably 20, 30 minutes before it sets up. But if you um, block it right as, as it splits, then the onset time is much better, much quicker. Ankle foot, uh, depending on the injury, you may want to include a saphenous block, which I do at the adductor canal. And uh, again, these are easy blocks to do. Um, all I got to do is, is um, YouTube them and go for it, or have a mentor to show you how. Anybody that has used ultrasound and is comfortable with ultrasound blocks, it's not hard adding a new block um, by watching uh, an expert um, on YouTube. You're already familiar with blocks. You do them. Um, you can identify nerves. You're used to the ultrasound, etc. So. If you haven't, then I'd recommend finding a mentor. There's plenty out there. Um, anybody in Montana, I'm happy to help. Just holler at me. I believe in spreading the gospel, uh, free and open medical education. Um, I appreciate whoever it was that started that, and I'm a firm believer in it. 
So you can see I use um, around 20 cc's, either 0.5 or pivocaine, which is my preference, or you can use 0.5 um, marcaine. Makes these patients very happy. Um, I do these a lot after surgery or for surgeries for post-op analgesia as well. And it's just a fantastic block. And uh, some resources. Twin Oaks has a number of fantastic classes, um, not just peripheral nerve blocks, which we talked about today, but also critical care ultrasound, um, point of care ultrasound, all the various techniques. They have cadaver labs. Um, they're truly a great um, conference, and I highly recommend them. And um, a reference you can keep on your iPhone, I use this all the time, <coughs> Block Buddy. It's the best um, peripheral nerve block reference out there, in my opinion. And I have the links for both those there. A couple of podcasts that I want to mention, just because they are just simply outstanding. Um, UltrasoundPodcast.com with um, Mike Stone, Mike Mallon. And um, Matt Dawson. They're hilarious. I love their podcast. Uh, Five Minute Sauna with Jacob Avila. And he's also kind of in with these other guys a little bit. I'm not quite sure how, but he's outstanding. And they do more than just peripheral nerve blocks as well. They go into um, uh, all the various types of uses for ultrasound. And I can't tell you how much I've learned from those guys. I went to a conference in, um, in the Bahamas at... Uh, Atlantis a few years ago, Blood in the Sand, and all those guys were there, and, and the educational opportunity was the best I've ever had. They were simply fantastic. I just can't say enough nice about them. And just simply nice guys, too. I was just amazed um, at at the um, just normal people. I met Scott Weingart down there, who was also fantastic. I really enjoy his EM Crit podcast. And again, free and open medical education, and these guys are doing it, and um, I really appreciate it. So if you're not doing um, or offering peripheral nerve blocks in your ER, um, please consider it. The benefits to the patients are absolutely huge. You don't have to um, worry about NPO status and moderate sedation and blah, blah, blah. It, it, and they're really, you know, they're really easy to learn, I promise you. So... Get them in your toolbox, and I and um, I think you'll be happy. So if you like this podcast, please um, like and subscribe. I'll be coming out with more, again, free and open medical education, and um, hope this helps. You guys have a great weekend.